first thing that pops into your mind when you think about Miami? The city. Beaches. When I think of Little Havana, I think like, you know, like a lot of Spanish people and stuff. Nice. Miami is very fast paced. We participated in the Miami Shooting Safari, where we explored some of some neighborhoods most of us barely knew. We met some characters along the way and heard a lot of great stories that helped us understand Miami better. We started out in Wynwood. While Wynwood has gotten a lot of attention for its shops, outdoor art, restaurants, nightlife, its history dates back to 1917. That's almost 100 years ago. From working class neighborhoods to fashion district to burned out warehouses, Wynwood has gone through a lot of transformations throughout the years. This man right here is Tony Goldman, the developer of Wynwood. Did you also know that he's the man behind New York Soho and our very own Art Deco district in South Beach? Street art has become a defining characteristic of many of the neighborhoods in Miami, but here in Wynwood, it takes center stage and a few years ago Tony Goldman came up with the idea of an open art air gallery of street art called the Wynwood Walls and this trip is mainly about getting to know Miami and getting to know things that you've never really seen about Miami and knowing it in a higher detail. What makes Wynwood unique? Uh, I, I think that the demographic, the people that, that, that have businesses here are, are sort of on the cutting edge of, uh, of what is, um, I guess, what is hip and what is uh, modern and new in, in, uh, in business and in art and in design and marketing and everything. They're all moving to Wynwood. All these businesses that are creative are moving to Wynwood. And that draws, you know, tourists and tourism and, and as well as, like, um, people that want to be a part of it. How has art influenced Wynwood? Oh, I think that that's what started in here. Right? Um, the Wynwood Walls are what started bringing people to Wynwood in the first place to to see the, the graffiti art and the street artwork, and that has evolved into what we have now. One of the artists whose gallery is found in Wynwood is Peter Tunney. Although his art might be international, to us, it's simply a powerful message. One of the messages that I admire the most is, don't panic, and also, hmm, let me think, the time is now. Peter has had a pretty long and wild ride, and through all of those experiences, this is where we're at. He's painting We Live in a Beautiful World and gratitude and messages like don't panic and it's all good, everything is going to be amazing, courage. Um, and he paints, he paints the word gratitude. He puts it up in paintings, on billboards, on walls, um, and he puts an extra T for the attitude of gratitude. And through these uplifting, inspiring messages, he's hoping to inspire um, and change the attitude of you guys, uh, communities, cities, change, change the way we all think. Peter's a very positive person and his artwork very clearly conveys that. I uh, work with Peter in the studio both here and in New York. So as you can see, there's a lot of clipping that, in, that goes into his artwork. So that's a lot of organization, a lot of going through books. I source materials, collect things. Uh, I'll work with him on paintings. A lot of them are pretty large, and certain things require a couple extra hands. Um, and I do whatever is necessary to keep the studio running. Can't run out of paint, can't run out of brushes. and. We have to do everything to make sure that when Peter's here, he's able to do what he needs to do to create these artworks. But most recently, uh, the work that he did for this past year's Art Basel were the time capsules. And they're these enormous boxes. And they're really 3D diary pages. And to me, they're the most quintessential Peter Tunney pieces that there are because they include collage, they include the words, they include the ephemera of his life that he is so attached to and so about. He doesn't buy these things. The things in the, in the cases that you see around, he's collected throughout his life. They're 
a part of him and they're a part of his childhood. So there are things from Peter Beard days in the boxes. There are things from, honestly, when he was a little kid. I know that there's a, a little statue that his father won in a business uh, meeting. And it's, those just, they really feel like Peter to me. Is why there are pieces that just say courage. They could say more, but it, you're, the point comes across with courage. He's also totally obsessed with words in the dictionary. He loves dictionary definitions. He uh, is, is kind of constantly amazed at how he might think he knows what a word means, and then he actually looks it up in the dictionary, and it's, it's not quite the same. He always talks about courage in particular. He thought being courageous was like, oh, if something bad happened, he could go punch a guy, and like that was, that was being courageous. And he looked up the definition, and it's the quality of mind that enables one to face danger with confidence, resolution, and a firm control of oneself. It's not always about art here in Wynwood. We talked to a landowner, David Lombardi, that moved in to they moved into Wynwood in 2000. Wynwood is the living, working artist community in the city of Miami. It's full of creative industry, office tenants, galleries, tremendous murals, great food and beverage, independent and foreign film theaters. It's just a bastion of creativity. Well, this uh, neighborhood became unique because it became like a, a art district. Before, it was a neighborhood that uh, there was only warehouses, and then in the past years, it became like a, a art center. Like every all the galleries are here, so that makes this area very, very unique. For example, the Winwood Brewery, where they craft about twelve types of beer from scratch. I would take you to Zach the Baker, who bakes incredible crusty loaves of bread. Uh, clearly Panther Coffee, which is like the Chamber of Commerce for the neighborhood. I would take you through my Seminole building that was built in 1926, where we have these live work lofts I created in 2001. And I would probably take you to see Museo Vault, which is the finest art storage facility in the country, built from the ground up to the highest specifications of the art insurance industry, which my partners and I own. So guys, tell me something that you guys actually found out while you were here in Wynwood that you didn't know before. Well, I learned about an artist by the name of Veals who actually made a face without paint. All he did was scrape out concrete from the wall and he made a beautiful painting which really, like, was impressive. Oh, that's cool. And, um, and you? Uh, well, I learned that art is not only in the walls but it's influenced in the restaurants and businesses and pretty much everywhere from where people dress to what they eat you know yeah well there you have it now we're gonna move to little Haiti